A very good morning and welcome to Oberhof in the heart of the Thuringen Mountains here in Germany for the start of one of cross country's epics. Eight days, in fact, ten days, eight races, five different venues. This is the start of the Tour de Ski. 79 men have entered, 58 women lined up for the start of the prologue today. And uh, this is always one of the highlights of the cross country season. Mike Dixon, alongside myself, Patrick Winston, will be with you throughout the tour. Uh, which of course finishes in Val di Fiemme on the Alp Chamis. But today it's all about the prologue. And for me, this is one of the most fascinating races of the season because it's such a difficult distance to judge. It's a very difficult dist distance, Patrick. You don't know whether to go flat out from the gun. The sprinters will, and sometimes we see them tying up as they close in on 2.5. <laughs> Welcome back to Oberhof, of course, a venue that's used for many of the winter sports, the biathlon tour coming here later. But today, all eyes are on the Tour de Ski. And this is the start of uh, the hardest program that the cross-country skiers go through for the year. And uh, as a result of that, one or two noticeable absentees. Well, that's it. And the biggest name, Marit Bjorgen, she's decided, like last year, not to take part in the Tour de Ski. As you said, eight races, ten days. She feels that's enough to knock her back for what is important to her this year, the World Championships in Oslo. Well, that would be fascinating. She's obviously said that the uh, World Champs are the, the high priority. Let's have a quick look at the weather. You can see minus four degrees, due to get a little bit warmer as the day goes on, and then tomorrow it should be hovering around minus two, minus one. Not too much wind to uh, worry about, but the main factor, there's heaps of snow, just as there is across the whole of Europe, and that sets us up for a very, very good tour. In the past, we've had real problems with snow making. Not so today. You can see that the uh, the forests here in Turingen absolutely covered in the white stuff. It's a brilliant winter setting and everyone looking forward to uh, a New Year's Eve uh, spectacle here, the uh, prologue. Here's the profile, Mike. Talk us through the tough part of the course. Very flat beginning to the course and this is where it's tempting to go too hard too soon. Look at the climb up to the camera point one. The descent from that climb, we've seen some of the athletes falling on the very sharp right hander before the climb back up into the stadium. So quite a technical course. Your legs will have uh, limited feeling when you get down to the sharp right-hander, so care needs to be taken. Yeah, not as bad as some years, because uh, as you can see, there's lots of fresh snow around, so it's a little bit slower than the icy conditions that we have seen in the past. Petra Magic, surprisingly, the winner last year in this event. She starts number 54, so a long, long wait for her as we have a quick look through the start list. And as I mentioned, 58 women have put their names down for the tour this year. Bundles of World Cup points to be won. There's lots of money on offer 5,000 Swiss francs for the winner of each individual day. If you win the overall tour, you're going to go home with 33,750 Swiss francs in your back pocket. Some sportsmen would say, Mike, that's a lot of work for, for a little money. It is a lot of work, Patrick. When you look at the, the locations, of course, we have two days of racing here in Oberhof. Then it's uh, down to Oberstdorf in the south of Germany and then over into Italy for the final three races or three stages of the tour. And so it's a fair bit of traveling and an awful lot of racing. Now we're getting towards the big names that many of you will recognize. 45 is Shevchenko. It's interesting to see how Anna Haag goes today. The Swedes have got Haag and Kala. There's Kala number 56 going off just after Mariana Longo. I think Ariana Follis is certainly one to keep an eye on today. She's a very good sprinter. She's a canny racer and I think probably has the strength and the maturity to come Cope with the sort of distance that they have today. And then the last to start, Mike, last year's tour winner, Justina Kowalczyk. Kowalczyk, this is an interesting course, Patrick, for Kowalczyk. She does not like the flats, and there's quite a lot of flat. You need stability, you need to float across the surface, and she'll admit she prefers steep climbs, hard work. It, it suits her style. Well, she's got that climb. She does have that one long climb, so it'll be interesting to see how, how she goes, and uh, it's always a bit of a dilemma. Do you put your money on the sprinters, or do you go for the distance? Distance athletes. It's the distance for the sprinters that makes you think you might favour Bjorgen if she was racing or Follis. But Mike, because of the big climb, you have to have the engine. You have to have the sort of uh, VO2 qualities of a distance racer, and that's why we can, we, we very seldom predict the right winner. It's so true. But it's a lot of good sprinters. Uh, Prozhashkova as well. She's one of the best sprinters. Can she last this distance? 2.8 kilometres. 
it is a long way. Well, if, flat uh, out pace. Yeah, if you're going to put some money on it, uh, if, if you're going by the midway, Marcus, the person leading at the halfway stage very, very seldom wins. They run out of gas before the finish line. So, moments away from the start of the 2010-2011 Tour de Ski, Helen Jakob of Germany is going to be the first away, an 18-year-old. Question marks as to whether she'll do the whole tour, but good to see her out. A real experience for her, and uh, a huge number of fans, uh, including family, are here to uh, watch her first uh, day on the Tour de Ski. I must say, Patrick, for uh, Helene Jacobs, first World Cup, she was she was very relaxed there on the line. Uh, she knows there's no pressure on her, and she'll just enjoy this experience. Yes, yeah, Sandra Ringwald. We saw her in Dusseldorf racing there. Didn't actually qualify for the uh, knockout phases of the sprint. Finished 45th, but uh, she's pretty quick. Did very well at the juniors. Got into the top 15 of the Junior World Championships. And uh, many who fail to do that go on to achieve great things on the World Cup Tour. So uh, we'll keep a careful eye on her. Sandra Ringwald, starting number two, ahead of Julia Tekonoma of Russia. First of the Russians away. And Mike, uh, I know you had a careful eye on the Russian team like Shakalova, Ilyana and Ivanova. Yeah, I like the look of especially Ilyana. They, I mean, they've just raced uh, the Russian girls. Most of them have raced in the Eastern European Cup way over in Krasnogarsk over the Christmas period, including Christmas Day. Uh, so they've had two days off, which has mostly been traveling. And, and the form there, it looked good to me. Will it be good here with the rest of the world competing? We'll have to wait and see. Well, that was a fairly sharpish start from uh, Chikonova. So uh, she may well be leading when she goes through the first of the split times, or the only split time that we have at the top of the climb. Lada Nesterenko now for Ukraine. Racing on uh, Mecha skis today. Ski choice uh, always important. The conditions at minus four, Mike, are about perfect. They, it makes easy work for the technicians, easy work for the ski providers. Well, that, that's right, and the athletes by this stage of the season will have a feel for the skis which work in these fairly hard pack conditions. So it's all about the, the final preparation. The technicians have been busy. First of the French to start, Celia Bourgeoise from Grenoble Ski Club. And uh, at 27, she's been uh, around... A hasn't managed to break into the top 30 in a World Cup so far this year, but... Uh, the French, certainly a nation that are coming on, Mike. Uh, they always look good in La Clusard and uh, really enjoyed the World Cup races there. Yes, I'm getting used to this uh, ski suit as well. <laughs> they didn't like it at the beginning of the season. I think they're actually growing into it. Yeah, I think they put it in the wash with the blues. It's sort of toned, <laughs> it's toned down the yellows a little bit. But uh, the whole idea of a ski suit like this is that the coaches can pick them out, that the uh, athletes can pick out each other, and of course that uh, the commentators can pick them out. And uh, it's got it's got many people talking about them, so it's achieved uh, its aim. Well, this is the first uh, major climbs, Patrick. Uh, we've left the stadium area now, and this is the climb up into the into the hills, which seems to go on and on. And I must say that for a first ever World Cup race. Helene Jakob is, is going very, very well. Yeah, good steady positions. Looks strong around the hips. There's Jochen Bela, who's uh, now been in charge of the uh, German team for a decade. What a fantastic job he's done. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on with the next phase, Mike, with the, the older men, particularly in the German team, starting to retire. Uh, it won't be long before Anger and Teichmann hang up their skis, whether Jochen stays on and tries to bring forward the next bunch. Well, that's an interesting aspect. Certainly in the women's side, of course, with uh, Helene Jakob, here she is, uh, only 18-year-old. They are bringing the younger members into the female side, but I think we're still staying with the regular steady names in the men's field. And, of course, with names like Teichmann and Anger, they're fantastic names in cross-country skiing. So, through the halfway stage, for Jakob at 1.4, 2.8 the distance for this prologue event, which is uh, which is a good kilometer, at least a kilometer longer than the sprint event, probably one and a half kilometers longer than even the longer sprint events for women. So uh, it's sort of a double sprint in one. The only the only upside, Patrick, I think, is after this major climb here, there you, you've got about 25 seconds of downhill recovery. So in your mind, you look upon it as almost two different sprints after this major climb. Look at this, Ringwald isn't quite as fast. She started faster, but she's fading already up the climb. Svetlana 
Bokareva for Russia, and she'll be followed by uh, her teammate Shaida Ruva, who's uh, waiting to go with bib number 11. Shokarova now 26, and uh, haven't seen too much of her on the World Cup tour. Interesting, the Russians bringing in some new names as uh, you have to do, you have to be bold enough to do it, give uh, the athletes a run out, give them some World Cup experience, but uh, the tour de ski is an experience like no other. Eight races, 10 days. And this is a big opportunity here for, for these newly entered or uh, first uh, time on the World Cup Russian girls. They need to impress the coaches to try and ensure they're in the teams for the World Championships and all the rest of the races this season. Back to the split time, and certainly Bourgeois looks to be going well. The work rate is high, a little bit rocking and rolling with the sh shoulders, Mike. She looks as though she's putting a long reach forward, but rotating the shoulders the, the wrong way to actually shorten it. Well, that's right, and the hip rotation as well. It's always a good thing to try and keep the hip bones as level as possible. Slight rotation there but she's inside the fastest at the moment. Good start. Welcome back to over half very early stages of the Tour de Ski Prologue. First event, obviously, and uh, one or two of the starters have been through the halfway stage. It's a short 2.8 kilometer blast, but it's as painful as any race they will do this season. And the early leader from France uh, is Jean with a time of 3.37 at 1.4 and Vina is just outside that. Well, the early starters so in fact, the first starter, Jakob of Germany, 18 years old, across the line, and she sets the mark of 7 minutes, 14 seconds. Now, from that time, Mike, I know she's young, I know she's inexperienced, what, what, do you, what will you predict the winning time today? It's difficult to say, but I think we're going to, we're going to see at least a 30-second turnaround, or uh, be below that uh, 7.14, so 6.45, maybe even 6.35 for the likes of Kowalczyk. We'll have to wait and see, though. Well, that would be very quick for 2.8 Ks. Uh, standard racing time, club racer, probably taking three minutes per kilometer. So uh, exceptionally quick already at 7.14. And suddenly the uh, fastest time comes down to 7.10. Sandra Ringwald now le leading as uh, Sarah Lindborg of Sweden heads out of the stadium. She comes from Ostersund and so uh, has the benefit of some of the best cross-country facilities in Europe. Oh, fantastic facilities up in Ostersund. I wonder if the water supply is fixed up there. <laughs> we were up there for the Biathlon World Cup, they had some problems, but it's a great area for training and for early season training as well. For me, Ostersund's one of the best locations. Sarah Svensson for Norway, first of the Norwegians to get underway from Tromso on, uh, well, the west coast. I think it's known as the Paris of the North. Tromso, beautiful area. And uh, of course, at this time of year, not a lot of daylight. <laughs> so, and, and that's a, it's a great thing after having spending Christmas in Norway to come back down to Central Europe. The daylight you feel good by uh, getting an extension of a couple of hours in the afternoon. What you make of the technique? I was just trying to figure that out. I'm a little surprised. There's there's a lot of uh, rotation in from the knees, which isn't always good. It puts you on an edge early. Quite wide skis as well, whereas the Norwegians classically are very upright, look very elegant on the skis. It's uh, it's more of a, a German technique as she comes up to uh, 1.4. How's it going? 3.37 the fastest. She's 10 seconds plus outside that 11.5. That's quite a big margin, but uh, there's still plenty of time that can be made up on the second phase if you've saved something. That's if you've managed to save something on the big climb. That's a good time from Jean. That's uh, 6.50. So uh, a great time, <laughs> taking so much out of the previous uh, Bourgeois, her teammate, by 10 seconds. Yeah, so that's 25 seconds of that 30 gone already. We might be looking at a time around 6.30 for the win. But the French have the lead at the moment with uh, Jean, and uh, they now will watch uh, Lara Bartholomew as she sets out over the course. Um, just just to explain, Mike, the, the World Cup points crucial. What, one of the big factors with, with Mark Bjorgen not racing this year, everyone's saying, is it going to be the first year that someone wins the overall World Cup without racing in the Tour de Ski? Because you could pick up 
550, 600 points possibly if everything goes to plan in the Tour de Ski. And of course, Bjorgen, despite the fact that she's won just about everything she's done this year, still only has a lead of 100 points in the World Cup. Yeah, it's, it's a big risk, I think, for Bjorgen. She did, she, she was looking to win the overall World Cup title. That's the racing season, all the races added together. But it's a huge disadvantage to not be 